Today I'm going to be going over a common problem on MacBook Airs, which is that on a DC power supply, when you plug it in, it's only pulling between 2 to 250 milliamps. So I take these MagSafe adapters, I always start with an 85 watt because I want the tip to tell the computer that it's 85 watt in case I'm plugging it into a Pro. I always take these adapters and what I do is I snip the tip off and then I plug it into a DC power supply. This way, I'm not always going through adapters and killing them and I also get to see exactly how much power that it's being drawn from the DC power supply. So if I plug this in, as you'll see, it is dead. Now, if I go over to my DC power supply over here, let's just take my camera, move it around the store, you'll see that well, the first thing you'll see is that Paul's HDMI port got destroyed by me trying to plug in the wrong cable. <laughs> but the second thing you'll see here is that I'm drawing about 200 milliamps, anywhere from 180 to 200 milliamps when I have it set to 18 volt. And it's dead. Over here, you'll see that we have a Power Rails page. And on this page of Rails, we have suffix and prefix. So the prefix is going to tell us how many volts the power rail is typically. So PP3V42, that's 3.42 volts. PP5VS5, PP5V, 5 volts. And the suffix is going to tell us the state that that rail will be on in. So S5 means be on while the machine is off. S4, that power rail should be present when the machine is hibernating. SO, that should be present when the machine is on. So S5 is going to be when the machine's off, S4 is going to be when it's hibernating, S3 is when it's in suspend, SO is going to be when the machine is on and working and the CPU and everything should be on and working. Now, it, the, what this usually means when we are taking about 180 milliamps on the AIRs, the 820-3437s and also the 820-0165s, is that all the SO rails are going to be present besides one. So let's see if that is the case here. So I'm going to get my camera zoomed in on my meter since I still haven't gotten a multimeter that reliably works with the machine in Windows. Got to buy myself a new one since this one's acting up. So let's turn this thing into voltage mode and see what we get if I try to measure, let's say, PP5VSO. So PP5VSO is going to be present around my fan connector over here. So I could just go over to my fan connector area. And let's take a look and see what it is that I get. So if I do this and I do this, as you'll see, I do get five volts, which means that one of my SO rails is likely missing. Now, if I were to check for something like, let's say CPU V core, which is also an SO rail, the CPU is supposed to turn on while the thing is on. If we move over here for CPU, you'll see that I'm getting zero volts. So let's take a look through the board and see if there's an obvious cause for us not having our voltage. So if we look through, da, 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 da. it's furry. This, this board is a furry. It's quite a furry board. And if we go to the bottom of it, Yuck. Gross. All right, so let's see what this area of the board is for, since that is fairly disgusting. Now, if you were to go over to our board view software, that is, uh, here we go, Q8150, and Q8150 is going to be for the all sys power goods circuit. So the way this works is most of the primary power rails shoot out a P good signal, as you can see here. So DDR reg P good, P1VO5 SO, P good, P5VS4, P good, uh, 1V8S3, P good, and so on and so forth. And if any one of those is missing, it'll pull the rail down. And all sys power good is pulled up by PM sleeve S3 buff L on R8167. So if any one of those rails is missing, we are screwed. Now, typically, to be in an SO state, 
you have to have all the rails below it. So let's say if we're in an S4 state, we can immediately assume that all the S5 rails are working. If we're in an S3 state, we can assume all the S5 and S4 rails are working. And if we're in an SO state, we can assume that all the S5, S4, and S3 rails are working. The SO rails are going to be created by the rails that came before it. You cannot be in an SO state if you're missing S4 or S5 rails. That's, think of it like a pyramid. It's a hierarchy. It has to work that way, and it has to progress in that linear fashion. All right, so let's just clean up this area over here a little bit. I'm just going to add some flux, kick on my fume extractor. And get to work. So, we're just going to do a little bit of a cleanup job. If any of the joints are cracked, they should get fixed through this process. And I'm going to take some solder and make those resistors a little bit nicer than they were before. Think of it like filing your nails. Just gently filing your nails. Like so. Now, there, some of these resistors will be fine, but some of them will be too far gone. And I want to see which ones those are. So for example, something like that, while corroded, can be made silver again. That one can be made shiny again. But some of these will not be made shiny again. And those are the ones that we're going to be repealing and replacing with better ones. There we go. Just get rid of some of the junk on that joint. So much flux, so reflective. I want to have a nice, tiny, small, healthy mound of solder on each. And there I think we have it. Now it's time to grab a nice resistor set from a nice looking donor board. A pretty donor board that doesn't have any corrosion on it. A fitter, happier, more productive donor. Do we have that? Well, it seems that we do. Now one thing that I like to do here that I talk about on stream a lot is I don't put the board that I'm stealing from under the microscope. I put the board that I'm working on under the microscope. And the reason for that is if I pick up this component and then I try to move this board under the microscope, whatever I have in my tweezers is going to fall down. And it's also not efficient if I'm stealing numerous components at a time. So I all, now I don't really particularly care about accuracy or on the donor board because I'm going to be you know, it, it's junk. So if I happen to knock something off on the donor, I don't particularly care. That's something I care about on the board that I am soldering on. But not so much on the board that I'm stealing from, so... Like, just for example there, I just so happened to knock something off because I wasn't looking through a microscope, but it's broken anyway, so I don't particularly have to care. So I can just grab another one and do this.
Okay, we put everything back. We're going to use Rossman patented rapid cool technology to cool off the board prior to running any electricity through it. So there we go. We got some rapid cool technology going on. Bam. Beautiful. Mwah. What a perfect looking little board. Fitter, happier, more productive. Fitter, happier, more productive. Fitter, happier, more productive. Hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I should just replace that one too, shouldn't I? All right. All right, I'll replace it. You're right. When you're right, you're right. And you're all right. Just replace it. And that one's missing from this donor. Okay. That's karma for you. I lose a resistor and then I need a resistor. That's karma. Karma police. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. All right, now let's go for another round of the rapid cool technology. Should have done that when there was flux on the board, but I suppose better late than never. Make everything look a little bit sexier. All right. Now let's see if we get a fan spin. Do you think we're going to have a fan spin? Oh, yeah. And as we can see, if we move my camera over, we're grabbing a nice, healthy, six to 700 milliamps, sometimes going down to 500, but still completely healthy. So just to recap, when we have the issue where we're drawing about 180 to 220 milliamps, that's typically an issue where every SO rail is present, but the machine is not turning on. This can be caused by platform reset L being held low, which is a nightmare. Most of the time, it's simply being held low by an issue in the all sys power good circuit, or it's being held low, or it's, it's being held there because one of the SO rails is missing. And remember, you need all the SO rails to work in order for the machine to turn on. If one of the SO rails is missing, it's going to do that thing where, you know, it thinks it's on, but it's not really on. And that's something that you can tell by attaching a MagSafe to a DC power supply and being able to read the amount of amperage that it's putting out. I knew that I did not have to check for PM Sleep S4L missing. I know I didn't have to check for PP5 ES5 missing. I'm not going to check PM DSW power good. I'm not going to check anything for the lower rails because this setup has allowed me to tell instantaneously where my issue likely lies. And just like with diode mode measurements, where you make a diode mode measurement to ground on certain parts of the board, so maybe you've seen me do something like the red probe on ground and black probe on backlight output and then diode mode, the same way that I can tell instantly if it's the feedback trace blown, 0.469 to 0.511, bad LED driver, 0.2 to 0.3, bad switch trace, 0.2 to 0.3, or broken LCD connector 0.007, I can tell here very quickly exactly what the issue is with the board by writing down the amount of amps that it's using and then correlating that to the problem once I figured it out. So, and the important thing if you're doing repairs day in, day out, same thing over and over and over again, is that you can limit the amount of time that you spend using your brain. If you can go through your day without having to use your brain much on the repetitive problems, that means that you can use your brain for the new problems. And the money is always going to be long-term in figuring out those new problems and writing them down and then coming up with a way to allow others to follow in your footsteps to figure it out. The 
more you can create a manual for yourself by using things like the diode mode measurements or the amperage readings from the power supply, the easier it is to train newbies who may not know every single signature fault like you do as to how to do this type of work, and also the quicker and more productive you can be. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something, and if this information has helped you in any way, shape, or form, we would highly appreciate it if you click below and bought a hot air station, a tool, anything, Multimeter probes, we got multimeter probes, we got hot air stations, we got flux and solder paste and chipsets for all sorts of MacBooks from 2008 to the present, and all sorts of iPhones from, I think, 2012 to the present. Connectors, TriStar, Chestnut, backlight circuitry, Wi-Fi, we, we, we got everything. You should check it out. So that's it, and as always, thanks for watching.